Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Knife Chats with Tobias. What you see before you is a bunch of, uh, well, there's four Marlin Spike knives and um, one uh, Navy Jack and a um, another knife that is often called the Coast Guard knife. Um, there's a lot of misconceptions about all of the knives that you see before you. And I thought I would try and clear a little bit of that up. Oh, and by the way, all of the knives you see before you are actually made by Camillus. Now, I'll, I'll start with the um, this one here, the, uh, the Coast Guard knife, or a lot of people refer to it as a Coast Guard knife because, well, quite frankly, on the back side of it over here, you'll see it says Approved U.S. Uh, Coast Guard, USCG uh, 1944 Q5. Uh, and this is often referred to as a Q5 knife. And it is a type of rope knife, as you can tell. Um, and uh, the question is, is it a Coast Guard knife? Well, yes and no. Uh, what the Coast Guard did was they approved the knife for nautical use or for maritime use. Uh, and actually, uh, most people think that most likely what they were doing was actually... Um, saying, yes, this knife would be good for the merchant marines and stuff. Uh, so that's really what this is for. The Coast Guard probably used it. It might have even seen service in the United States Navy and so on and so forth. But basically what it was is in 1944, um, the Coast Guard approved this knife for merchant service or marine service. Um, by marine, I mean on the ocean. And that's really what these knives are. Uh, it turns in later to the S702, another knife that uh, Camillus makes. And several other people also made these knives. So here's the uh, S702 um, by Camillus. And notice they have added a can opener to it. Um, and you have the exposed rivet going through the uh, the bolster up front. But you uh, it maintains the... Uh, the large uh, clevis on the back side here and now you can also see how full the blade would be and this was actually known as a coping blade uh, by Camillus uh, it's basically a ram's foot style blade um, you can see on this one the blade is worn down quite a bit you can see the difference between the two there okay um, the other thing is is People assume that this knife came out in 1944, and that is not um, true either. This knife was actually being made before World War II. It was approved by the Coast Guard for service in 1944, but it was already being used by quite a few people already um, in nautical services. So uh, that's a few things that I think a few people would like to know about these knives. You will actually see... Um, earlier versions of this knife and you will often find knives um, with and without the Coast Guard approved on there because after World War II they stopped doing the uh, approved uh, US Coast Guard and uh, before 1944 there were also some done without the uh, US Coast Guard approval stamp and you will see here this is just stamped S702 and on the front side Camilla Stainless USA this knife dates from probably somewhere around the 1970s or 80s. This one, most likely around 1944, 1945, somewhere around there. Okay, let's move on to the other knives you see here. I think what I'll do is I will start with the, uh, the main knife that was issued to uh, sailors, um, U.S. sailors during World War II. And that's this little guy right here. Uh, it's either known as the number 40 jackknife. It could also be known as the L46 or the 5541. Um, and as you can see, it's just a, it, this is a, a later one. This one's from the war period, um, sometime between uh, 43, 44, because it's not using any brass at all. It's all stainless steel. I'm sorry, uh, carbon steel, carbon steel liners and everything else. But it has a bone handle here. Got the clevis on the back side. Um, some sailor who knew what he was doing with rope uh, uh, put the line together in here so it will not come apart and see how well they put all that together. That took a little uh, skill. 
and then it's got a little metal tip on the end here. Uh, this one had a broken blade. You can see that here. This should be a pin blade, but it has been cut off uh, probably because the tip broke at some point. And so they just filed it down and made it smooth. Um, and the other blade on here is a large uh, spear blade. And again, this is by Camillus. You see there, Camillus Cutlery Company, Camillus New York, USA. It's a four liner. Um, and this was made during World War II for the United States Navy. And this was the most common um, jackknife issued to sailors in the United States Navy. A lot of people assume that it was a Marlin spike knife, but that's not the case. Now, um, I'm not saying that there were no Marlin spike knives used by the United States Navy. I'm just saying this was the, uh, the primary uh, pocket knife that was issued to sailors in World War II with the United States Navy. Now, Camillus did make a Marlin spike knife during World War II, but it looked nothing like this. Uh, the Camillus Marlin Spike Knife kind of looked like a cross between this knife and this knife during World War II. And um, they also made similar knives um, during World War I. And in both cases, the Marlin Spike Knives that Camillus were making were not being made uh, for the United States Navy, but actually were being made for the Royal Navy or for Commonwealth forces. Now, this knife here... Um, is by Camillus. This one is actually made uh, in England. Um, but the Camillus ones uh, would have a bone handle. Some of them might have had a wood handle or wood cover, bone cover, or stag cover, depending on when they were made. Uh, and this particular one was made for the Ministry of Defense. So this was actually made for the British Army, um, either for World War I or World War II. And you can tell the difference between because it has the uh, can opener here. This is the uh, British style can opener on these knives. Also, another interesting feature on this: this blade was not reprofiled. This blade is the way it would have been. It would have been a spear point blade. Um, the The British Army used both a spear point and a um, sheep foot blade on these knives, depending on what the order was. So. Um, and then obviously you see the big marlin spike on the back and you will also notice that these are big knives they're not a small knife this measures uh where's my ruler okay got the ruler back up here again um and you can see here the knife comes in right at five inches maybe five and an eighth of an inch is long these were big knives uh and as i mentioned this is the one that was made for uh, ground forces for the uh, uh, for the British Army. Uh, the one that was being made for the British Navy or the Royal Navy is also about the same size. It's five inches overall because of the screwdriver tip down here. Uh, and also, as you can tell, the Royal Navy knives uh, are lacking a, um, a uh, can opener. Now, um, <laughs> And I got to thank Slick Slicers for pointing that out to me. The Royal Navy knives did not have a can opener. The Army versions have a can opener. The Royal Navy knives also have a screwdriver tip down here at the bottom. But again, five inches long, so larger than any of the Camillus Marlin Spike knives down here. Um, and an interesting factoid about it is... Camillus was making these type of knives um, for Lindley's purposes uh, during World War II. They were making them for the British Navy or for the Canadian forces or something of that nature, but they were not actually making them for the United States Army. So what you would have found is a knife very similar to this, uh, but with a bone handle or a... Uh, or a wood handle on it instead of an all metal construction that you see on this uh, uh, Royal Navy knife. Uh, but they were not being made for the US forces. They were actually being made for the British forces. Um, so it was a lend lease contract. Uh, and while um, Camillus advertised that they were making these Marlin Spike knives uh, during World War II, um, after the after the war was over, they had a a nice spread of showing these knives, and you see this a knife that looks very much like this with the um, 
screwdriver tip, but they were not being made for American forces. The American forces were actually getting this knife or other knives such as the TL-29 and the camp knives and knives of that sort um, it, it, within the, uh, the, the, um, the Navy forces. So these were the kind of knives that you would be finding on a U.S. battleship. These would have been the kind you would have found on a British battleship. Uh, so that brings us to these knives back here. And specifically, the one right in the middle here. This is the uh, Camilla 697 pattern Marlin spike knife. Um, now, if at some point in time you thought that this was a knife uh, that... Um, was being uh, issued that Camillus was making for the uh, U.S. Navy during World War II. Uh, well, you're not alone. I also thought that this knife or a knife very similar to this was being made for the Navy during World War II. But as best I can tell, this particular pattern of um, Marlin Spike knife that Camillus was making actually came out somewhere around 1960 or so. Um, they did have a Marlin Spike knife, but it was not this knife. And you can see here a significant difference in size. The uh, Camillus knife comes in right at four and a half inches. So it is about a half inch shorter than this knife. And as you can also see, it does not have the screwdriver tip down here and you can also see that it's just bigger and bulkier the British versions were just bigger and bulkier than the um, than the Camillus knife here this is a much smaller knife and this is a knife that the um, that Camillus um, advertises as the US Navy Marlin spike knife now I believe that possibly in the 1960s um, they might have had a contract with the United States Navy to make these knives, and they may have started showing up on uh, Navy vessels uh, in the 1960s. I do not know if it was something that they would have been buying through um, the base exchanges or the uh, ship exchange, or if it was something that was actually issued to particular sailors who actually needed the knife or not. Uh, but this was the... Um, this was the 697, uh, came out somewhere in the 1960s, and um, really does not even show up in the Camillus catalogs until 1976. Um, the earlier one, the 695, this one here, this one I have seen in Camillus catalogs as far back as 1967. But this one shows up in the Camillus catalogs in 1976. Uh, my thought is, is it might have been that this version was being made for uh, PX cells. This version was being made for um, civilian cells. Uh, this was often known as the Yachtsman. This was known as the U.S. Navy knife. Um, and you can see here, you've got a more or less a sheep's foot or ram's head blade there. More, yeah, definitely more sheep's footy. Uh, very straight. Um, nice sheep's foot blade though. It's a, a slip joint. Got a very strong back spring going on. And the Marlin Spike locks uh, using the lever here. Okay, I was stumbling everywhere. This is a clevis shackle or bail and it's used to release the uh, marlin spike uh, or it can be used for your lanyard loop or whatever but that is what breaks the shackle i'm sorry it breaks the marlin spike so you can open and close it notice a single back spring there one strong very very strong back spring there and uh, two pins holding the uh, cover in the other pins are hidden there now the um this was the 695, uh, and as I mentioned a minute ago, uh, this one, I've seen it in the catalogs back to the mid-60s, uh, at least 1967, possibly 1965. Uh, notice, again, one single large backspring there, brass liners going on. 
um, a black Delrin cover with large bird's eyes. These are um, all stainless steel. I thought at one time that they might have been nickel silver or brass, but no, they're, they are uh, stainless steel. Uh, the pens here are also stainless steel, but you do have the brass liners going on. And um, the Marlins bike locks the same way as it does on the 697. And uh, very strong uh, closing, so you got to keep your fingers out of the way. I actually prefer the looks of the 695 over the 697. And like I said, this uh, um, was for the civilian market, I believe. I think they made this for sales on military bases. And then after 1976, we kind of know what happened in 1975. And um, I got a feeling that after the Vietnam War ended, um, contracts with the U.S. Navy might have dropped a little bit. So Camillus might have moved these over into uh, into the civilian world also and were marketing it as the uh, U.S. Navy knife because they did not have as many of them going off to the Navy. Um, now, as you notice, there's one more here, and that one is the 696. It is a little bit different from the 695. And the big difference between the 696 and the 695 has to do with the main blade. As you can tell, it's still stainless steel here. And you got the uh, the release here, the little lever release that uh, acts as your lanyard loop. And you got your Marlin spike. Now there's a couple differences on this knife because this one was made later. Um, the big difference though is the pattern number 696 which gives you a uh, what they referred to as a scalloped blade at the time. Um, it's a fully scalloped or fully serrated blade for the full length of it. And you'll notice here also that this is now saying Camillus New York USA instead of uh, Camillus Stainless USA. Um, got the brass liners, but got the blade there. And now you see two back springs instead of one back spring. Let's open up the 695 so we can see the differences between the two knives. So one solid back spring, two back springs. See that? And you'll notice that uh, Rough Rider, um, when they made their Marlin Spike knives, they moved over and continued to use the two back springs that you see on the Camillus knife here, as opposed to a single solid um, spring. And here the blades are side by side. Now, there's also another 696 that is out there, and it has a half serrated blade. Um, both of these are commonly referred to as the Piranha, but I believe the one that is um, a half serrated blade is the one that uh, Camillus marketed for a time being as a piranha and I'm still trying to get one of those. The um, serrations on the half, uh, half serrated blade will look different than what you see here too. Let me show you, it, it basically looks like Spyderco serrations. So here's a, an H1 and you can see the serrations that you see on the, uh, on the Spyderco Dragonfly with the H1 steel. Um, because this is made for nautical use. Uh, in any case, um, the serrations have a large gap and then two, uh, two small ones, large, two small, large, two small, or three little teeth. You see the large gap, three little teeth, however you want to look at it. And so what you would have is that on the front end of the, uh, or near the, uh, near the, um, tang of the blade and then the front half of the blade would just be regular smooth. That would be the other 696. That was the later version of the 696 that came out. Um, earlier ones have a full serration. I'm still looking for a later version of the 696. So far the only 696 I've seen also seem to have the um, the double back spring. Um, which leads me to believe that these came out a little later, which is kind of also odd. Um, the earliest I've seen of the um, 696 in catalogs is around 1987. Um, and that would go good with, uh, well, 
you see the double line Camillus there. So see that two lines for the Camillus, one above, one above, uh, below. So this came out, I believe, in 89 or later. Um, the one with the... Uh, the uh, Spider Coast style serration would come out after the uh, Spider Coast patent on that serration style uh, probably ended. I don't know for certain there. In any case, um, I thought I would uh, break these out and talk a little bit about them so you could kind of uh, get an idea of uh, where these knives uh, actually fit in the history of, um, well, uh, in the history of the actual United States Navy which basically said none of these knives fit the uh, United States Navy for like World War II or Korea because they did not even exist before the 1960s, most likely. Um, and this one may have uh, served with the United States Navy and might have actually been an issue knife, uh, maybe during um, the Vietnam War. Um, or it might have been something that was available through the PX. And this was actually the knife that was issued to sailors uh, during World War II and possibly even in the Korean conflict. Uh, this is probably the knife that was being issued to um, uh, sailors in the United States Navy. And final recap, um, this knife may have also been used by soldiers or, or sailors in the Navy, uh, also in the Coast Guard, but really the uh, U.S. Coast Guard approval was basically saying, yes, this knife is uh, suitable for maritime use, and it was really geared more towards it. This is a, a knife that would be a good choice for uh, merchant marines and stuff. And as for the other knives... That kind of look like this, or more likely the Camillus knives that look like this that Camillus was making during World War II. Those were Lend Lee's product. In any case, um, I hope you found this uh, informative. If uh, you can shed any light on any of this for me, I would really appreciate it. Um, like I said, at one time, I also thought this was the knife that uh, was issued to the U.S. Navy uh, during World War II, but... It definitely was not. Um, in any case, with that said, I will let you go.
let me take just a second to thank you once again for dropping by and spending a few minutes here at Knife Chats with Tobias. I really do appreciate it, and I do appreciate any comments that you leave. So please uh, remember to give me that thumbs up, and also don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you'll know when the next episode is up and running. Thanks again for dropping by. Really do appreciate your time here.